You're watching UNICEF Television. The day begins early for 14-year-old Christine. She shares a small tent in Port-au-Prince with her mother, brother, and sister, and must complete all of her chores before leaving for school. The January 12th earthquake destroyed their home, and for the past several months, they've been living in a temporary camp near the airport. It takes me almost an hour to go to school. Sometimes there's heavy traffic, and it's difficult to find room on a bus because the streets are so crowded. There are also blockages in the street that slow things down. It's not easy. Christine says education is the one thing that's going well in her life at the moment. She has a younger sister and an older brother, but her mother only had enough money to pay school fees for one of her children. She chose Christine. The earthquake not only destroyed Christine's home, it destroyed her school. For now, she's attending class in a temporary learning space provided by UNICEF, which is also supplying Christine and her classmates with clean drinking water, latrines, and hand washing stations. More than 200 of these temporary schools were set up and UNICEF is in the process of transforming them into semi-permanent structures made partially of concrete and bricks. Hundreds of additional semi-permanent schools will be built. All told, the new schools will help 135,000 Haitian children realize their right to an education. The biggest obstacle to building the new schools is removing the debris from the old schools. Some 4,000 schools were damaged or destroyed. Experts predict it will take years to clear the sites. In some cases, parents and school administrators are volunteering to remove the debris, as is the case in downtown Port-au-Prince, where a four-story school was reduced to this pile of rubble. Once the debris has been cleared, UNICEF will step in and establish a semi-permanent school. They're built on concrete foundations with steel tubes to strengthen the tent walls. Jeanette Matron is a UNICEF engineer who stresses the safety of the new schools. This is the first school where UNICEF will ensure that all of the children who come here will be safe. Even if there's an earthquake, even if there's a cyclone, they will be safe. Memories of the earthquake linger in people's minds. Christine is no exception. On this day, she has returned to the destroyed home where she lived with her mother, sister, and brother. It makes me very sad to be here. After the earthquake, we arrived and saw that the house had collapsed and we had nowhere to go. Back at camp, Christine tries to find a place in the shade to study. There is little relief from the relentless Caribbean sun, and the lack of ventilation inside the tents makes it nearly unbearable during the day. Christine clings to an education because she knows it offers hope in a country where hope runs scarce. My mother didn't go to school, and she's had a very difficult life. That's why she wants us to go to school and to excel to become somebody and to be able to take care of ourselves. She wants us to have a better life. Christine wants to become a doctor. It's a goal that keeps her focused and propels her through long, hot days. She fills her notebooks with drawings of the human body and dreams of the day when she is a doctor and can begin helping her countrymen. This is Thomas Nibo reporting for UNICEF Television in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. For more information, go to unicef.org. Unite for children.